in application of plant metabolites during COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to welcome our respected principal, Professor B.N. Yashoda. I welcome you, ma'am. I would like to welcome our convener of webinar, Professor J. Rajesh. I welcome you, sir. I would like to welcome Administrative Officer, Controller of Examination and Coordinator of IQAC. I welcome one and all the faculties and staff member of Department of Biotechnology. Now, I request Professor Rajesh, sir, to introduce the speaker. So thank you, Bhargavi, for a nice introduction. Uh, as all of us know, so during this uh, COVID-19, so which we are facing for the last one and a half year, uh, really, so it has become a challenge to this uh, scientific world. So you know that again, so there are many, so what we call vaccines or uh, some other medicines, so which are uh, being given to especially this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, but uh, so still we are uh, not success in this area. Uh, if you have a look at the various vaccines like this uh, COVID shield or uh, the Covaxin, uh, whatever it might be, but still we are unable to keep this virus at bay. And so further, so apart from this allopathy medicine, so I hope all of you are hearing day to day that we have to go for some Ayurvedic medicines like uh, what we call some Kashaya or some other uh, uh, medicines from the plant origin. So to order to boost our energy and also to keep this virus at bay. So nowadays, so the concentration of the public is being uh, diverted and uh, it, has, uh, it is attracting so toward the so plant origin. So keeping all this in mind and uh, that to at this stage, so I thought of uh, conducting one seminar. So on this uh, COVID-19 only that to, so by so aiming at, so in order to enlighten our students. So since biotechnology students, so they have these plant metabolites, that is secondary metabolites. So in their syllabus, keeping that in one hand and on the other hand, so by considering this COVID-19, so I, so finally, so we decided to so go for this sec plant secondary metabolites. And so we found the good speaker, so that uh, Dr. Giridhar Karvatam as the right and the suitable speaker for so this one. So if you have a, a look at Dr. Giridhar Parvatam, sir. Uh, so he's uh, working as a senior principal scientist at CFTRI Mysuru since 1999. He has done his MSc and PhD so from Kakatiya University, Warangal. And he was a dad fellow at University of so Beirut, Germany. So from 1995 to 96. And also he was a boys cast fellow at Institute for Research and Development Montpellier, France, so during the year 2005 to 2006. And so he has been in the area of research, especially in this plant secondary metabolites and some other uh, quite interesting so, so molecules, so for the last 21 years. And he made concerted efforts to develop novel and sustainable methods for the in vitro propagation of food value, especially what we call, so nowadays uh, in the supermarket, so we are uh, seeing functional foods and nutraceuticals. So in that area, he has great experience and he has extensively worked mainly on some of the isoflavones and also the anthocyanins, beta lines, and mainly, so his interested area are plant tissue culture, molecular biology, metabolic engineering, and plant secondary metabolites. So on which we are hearing his lecture today apart from phytonutrients and nutraceuticals and functional food formulations. So in addition to this, he was an elected fellow of National Academy of Biological Sciences, that is FNAB, Andhra Pradesh Academy of Sciences, Indian Botanical Society, Academy of Plant Sciences, India, Society for Applied Biotechnology, and also is an elected member of the National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad and Plant Tissue Culture Association of India. Further, he is a recipient of many awards, so like the Society of Tropical Agriculture India in 2019 and Senior Scientist Award of Asian Biological, Biological Research Foundation in 2019, Senior Scientist Award of Association of Biotechnology and Pharmacy in 2018, APSI International Plant Scientist Award in 2017, 
डॉक्टर राजमाल पी देवदास मेमोरियल एन ए बी एस बेस्ट सैंटिस्ट अवार्ड फॉर फुड सैनस इन टू थौसंड फिफ्टीन विफ्रा अवटैंडिंग सैंटिस्ट अवार्ड इन बयोटेक्नजी इन टू थौस फिफ्टीन लालजी गोलडो स्मार for excellence in r&d in the field of food science and technology so conferred by association of food scientists and technologists india in 2012 and csr cftr individual award for scientific contributions among scientists of group 4 in r&d in 2012 and professor ys murthy young botanist award of indian botanical society in 2009 professor hc dubey outstanding young scientist award of indian society for mycology and plant pathology in 2008 young scientist award of plant sciences india 2007 and shrimati kamala devi and shri ramlal diman gold medal for young researcher academy of plant sciences in 1999 and since he has been in the this research area so for the last so 21 years he has successfully guided about 11 phd students and 35 mtech and btech and msc student for their dissertation work and he has successfully developed the two process so in the area of this secondary plant metabolites only and he has 170 publications to his credit and also nine patients and patents uh, he has visited belgium china costa rica denmark france germany indonesia malaysia nepal and many more such countries so with this brief background of so dr giridhar sir i welcome him to deliver so his lecture on the topics today's topic so i welcome you sir so please thank you dr rajesh uh, so shall i share my screen uh, sure sir sure hope you are able to see this one yeah yeah sure. okay very good morning to all of you thank you dr rajesh uh, for the nice uh, words uh, and uh, even though it's a bit lengthy <laughs> I, it's okay thank you very much first of all i would like to say my thanks to yuvrajas college team for inviting me to deliver this uh, webinar webinar talk uh, professor uh, thanks to dr uh, rajesh professor department of high technology professor ashoda madam the principal of uh, yuvrajas college and all the faculty members and administration yeah, yeah the topic uh, what dr rajesh has asked me in fact it was initially the pan secondary metabolites but since the currently everyone is uh, Uh, having a problems health related issues with the covid 19 pandemic uh, why don't you take a topic uh, how best these plant secondary metabolites uh, can be useful uh, or applicable, applicable to alleviate the pan covid pand 19 pandemic related uh, problems uh, in us so accordingly that's why i have okay then we can i can uh, select this topic and also wherein we can uh, uh, contribute uh, the uh, research uh, research findings from cftra also wherever it is applicable in this uh, domain so that's why my topic for today is uh, trends in application of uh, plant metabolites uh, during this uh, covid-19 pandemic so everyone of us uh, are one or other way got affected uh, during the covid-19 pandemic uh, For the past two years, almost. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it, you, globally, if you look at this one, it is not the human loss uh, that this uh, COVID-19 has ravaged globally. But at the same time, the economies of the many countries, both developed and developing nations, uh, have become greatly affected by this uh, COVID-19 virus. This. Uh, covid 19 what is that virus that it causes is the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 
that is called properly is known as sars cov2 virus as we you know that this is a by many viruses a plant viruses a animal viruses all these things many of these students especially the graduate and post graduate students might have studied in their curriculum this virus particularly belongs to the animal virus coronavirus family how come this small virus particle that is 0.125 microvirus particle that has caused this much ravage in the globally the by affecting the both by the causing the severe disease that in the form of pandemic and also causing the huge loss to the human population if you look at the as on yesterday that is the 6th august 2020 if you look at the global statistics around 201 Yes, people that means approximately 20 more than 20 crores people globally got affected by this uh, coronavirus that is covid and it caused almost more than 42 lakhs people lost their lives of course equally a good number of people it will more than 18 crore people have recovered from this one being such a nano uh, size uh, particle how come this uh, rna part of uh, um, uh, gen- genetic code containing the uh, virus particle is responsible for this uh, devastation globally if you look at this is particular slide i would like to share that has published very recently in indian journal of ophthalmology uh, here there are two important two stages uh, to the virus particle if you look at the one is early viral response stage we can see this allo to orange mix one and the next one is a exaggerated host immune response phase so at the entry level based on the contagion or uh, contamination from one person to the other person that is called the r value the initially the spread will be low so that's why the mortality or death rate also will be low but once it enters to the human system and if it completely overtakes our body mission to especially immunal immunity and other things then a lot of havoc happens in the human body that leads to a high death rate so this these two stages are very well of course intermediately between these two stages a lot of metabolic changes happens in the human body first reported by tyrell and byam in 1966 uh, this actually very is a, this also particularly belongs to a particular type of common cold uh, symptoms otherwise the normal cold virus is the uh, rhinovirus but this is structurally certain variations will be there that because of its spherical nature and that contains a lot of spike like uh, projections that's why in latin it is called crown that is called coronavirus that is called coronavirus another way that looks like a crown so this belongs to uh, a, as i said in the coronavirus family and its gene you know, completely it is uh, genome is sequence uh, is known for uh, for the entire you can uh, couple of years back uh, that especially the positive since a single strand is its characteristic feature having the 27 to 32 kb genomic uh, rna here if you see it say that position here this uh, a nucleocapsid layer will be there and uh, and the spherical morphology is there why this is much here uh, nano particle size containing the uh, virus particle is responsible for this is uh, mainly it is uh, its uh, spikes here you can see the spikes this is called the uh, spike glycoprotein this is the glycoprotein the structures will be there that's called glycoprotein again if you go in depth uh, s1 s2 proteins will be there that we will see at the, some other uh, time in, in this talk and the next important thing is the membrane protein that stands for m that's called similarly the e that stands for the envelope of a small membrane protein and hemagglutinin is traced and uh, nuclear protein the central portion is the genomic rna among all these things the most important the things uh, that cause and the how the, the, that helps this virus particle to hook to the human tissues especially the lung alveolar tissues and epithelial walls uh, is the spike glycoprotein the next devastating thing one is mainly due to the membrane protein so the, the remaining things like uh, nucleocapsid and e these are the part once it enters into the human cell they detects the control of the cell so that is a simple as few points about the coronavirus i don't want to go in depth these are further divided into 
this virus particle, whatever this uh, SARS related, that means acute respiratory syndrome related virus particle, basically divided into alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Different subfamilies are there based on the variation in their protein structure. The alpha and the beta are recommended uh, from the mammals, especially from the bats, uh, and uh, they are responsible for infecting to the human. That's why these the beta coronaviruses are uh, considered as a threat to the human population. Actually, this is a mutated form. The one what we are uh, feeling, uh, facing now that for SARS-CoV-2 is a mutated form of the SARS-CoV-1, which is not so dangerous actually. But this, because of these mutations that occurred at its particular positions in its genome, this becomes uh, very highly spreading uh, in its nature. That is uh, the difference between this uh, earlier one and this one is a uh, spike protein. That S also there in that one here also it is there but again if you go to the subdividing is s1 s2 will be there the s2 is very very important uh, for its fusion to the human cells so that's why this becomes a very very uh, dangerous to the human actually it has its origin from the bat origin but of course according to many theories uh, from the bats it gone to the pangolins uh, and from there in the, in the through food chain it enters to the, the humans this is what we have heard many stories of how it got uh, its origin from in china and spread to the rest of the world if this picture is very very important i don't want to go to in depth but certain things because before we know where to where the, um, the actual uh, drug molecule or the metabolite um, uh, and uh, responsible to arrest the growth of this virus particle, if you want to know, you have to have a basic idea about this virus particle. Just I will just give a glimpse here outside this one is the coronavirus particle. It tries to hook to the cells of the human body, especially the lung tissue like the alveoli or any other tissues. It is mainly this because of the I mean, uh, ACE receptors uh, will be there. These ACE receptors are responsible. These are nothing but the protein molecules. So if once this virus particle spike protein come, come and join at uh, hook to this uh, ACE protein, the S2 part of this uh, spike protein makes a uh, uh, fusion and it takes the particle into the inside to the cell. So like this, it will undergo then the replication. Proteal proteolysis happens here and then it will go to the uh, central portion of the cell and uh, where in the, it's just like a workshop for example a virus particle initially a main gate will be there once it opens it enters to the uh, workshop there many tools will be there to use uh, any repair mechanism or uh, to further uh, uh, multiply or like that uh, similarly here the tools are uh, endoplasmic reticulum Golgi bodies and here by using all the cellular tools it undergoes multiplication and a lot of white and virions will be produced and it will come again come out uh, to exercise uh, and again spread to the other cells because of all these things uh, it happens uh, that rapid uh, viral multiplication here various like here as i mentioned earlier the e and n part of this uh, spike i mean this via corona particle that means the e and m that, that one these these uh, proteins uh, um, are responsible to take control of uh, complete mechanism here during this pain only at the entry level the spike protein plays an important role when it attaches to the AS inhibitors here, I mean, AS receptors in the human body, uh, I mean, human cells, uh, here the CL, 3CL pro and the PL pro, these are the most important uh, proteins uh, what available here uh, because of the glycolic like, uh, nature of this uh, virus particle to come and bind here and proteolysis happens, then because of the S2, it fusion will be there. So, this is a simple mechanism, but uh, we, we need to high understand. The, here, uh, there are some green dots are there, two, three, four, five, like that, like that. Just I think these are all the different flavonoid plant metabolites uh, and uh, some blue color ones are also there, are some the drugs and all these things. Uh, what are you know, known to be uh, useful to arrest this uh, proteolysis here so that the virus particles of fusion can be prevented at this point and further multiplication can be prevented. So most of the research has been um, focused at this point. Similarly, certain drugs like antiviral drugs uh, are useful for preventing the, uh, stopping the RNA replication and at this position also is at another important time. The, the ones, these two steps, if the virus particle is to escape and proceed to further rest of the treatment methods, uh, 
if we are uh, i mean generally we have to use it so the receptor recognition by virus is the most important to tap and as i explained here it is not the uh, angiotensin converting as to receptor on the epithelial i mean uh, what is called alveoli or lung tissue cells or whatever uh, this is the other important uh, receptor molecules like uh, amino peptidase a Yes, it is also called as uh, CD13-1 and dipeptidyl peptide is for DPP4 and a car uh, carcinoma embryonic antigen related one also there and cellular serine proteases. In the descending order, these are the so first pre predominant one is 90% will be S2, next CD3 and uh, CDDP4. These are very important and to, uh, some of the extent this one. So if you focus your research only on S2, sometimes escapes will be, you may be using the drugs against the S2, but still people, some people get this one because in spite have such a person uh, because of their body constitution or immuno, immuno like uh, status uh, these receptors also will be active and the uh, invite virus particles load into them so the cause of COVID where coronavirus indicates uh, these are the receptor molecules this is uh, just what i have explained just uh, earlier so let us look into the current and uh, probable options for the treatment of covid 19 this is just again a glimpse i would like to say as I mentioned just in the initially, the AS2 receptor and other receptor, wherein first entry level itself, we need to stop. That is the first thing. Similarly, second one is once it enters to the cell, the replication inhibitors has to be there. Here, to multiply this RNA uh, uh, in the inside the cell, it requires the RDP, um, that is called uh, RNA polymerase, that is RNA dependent RNA polymerase. If, there, if we are able to use any drugs or metabolites against this one, if it is stopped, it can be arrested the growth and it's a multiplication at this cell. As you know, we, may, we all have heard these buzzwords like remdesivir, tenovir, fabinavir, lopinavir, like these are antiviral drugs. In fact, all these things were not aimed at coronavirus. These were targeted for other immunodeficient viruses and other uh, viruses and other viruses, uh, but they have tried this because um, of its their uh, probable inhibitory role and uh, preventing the in this uh, virus particle during these initial stages. So the timing, is dosage, these are the two important aspects. As I mentioned earlier, the proteins which have no structural frames such as uh, this uh, chymotrypsin like protease and coffin like protease that is PLP, a lot of work these two are targeted uh, uh, to curtail the growth of this uh, virus particle multiplication. So many flavonoids and other things that I will mention you see. Similarly, there are very synthetic drugs, acetone, like uh, synthetic drugs, especially heterocyclic drugs uh, and anti-malarial drugs were also tried. That's why in the beginning, uh, during the Corona uh, COVID-19 uh, wave one, that lost in 2020, initially uh, the chloroquine drug, malaria, anti-malarial drugs were uh, recommended, because, but they cause a lot of uh, side effects. Uh, that's why later on it has been withdrawn. Because at that time, there is, I think that we don't do not have any other things. Uh, it was initially permitted, but later withdrawn. Apart from this one, the next possible therapy is biological therapies. That's called, therapy, called therapeutics, especially the antibodies and uh, plasma therapy. This also we might have seen this one, especially in the COVID wave one. This uh, antibodies and the plasma therapy was somewhat uh, successful, but because of the Delta variant uh, origin, the second subsequent wave, this plasma therapy became a useless thing. Similarly, then the vaccinations, of course, now everybody knew that vaccines, uh, we are also, many of you have taken already the vaccines. So the general need will be attenuated vaccines like uh, vaccines or spike protein based vaccines like Covishield, Pfizer, Moderna, Sputnik like this. The other alternative option now come to this is herbal drugs. So various herbal formulations uh, based on the traditional Chinese uh, medicine, traditional Indian medicine, Japanese traditional medicine, European medicines, and like the herbal medicines. So many such things so, have come into picture. Of course, it took uh, more than one year time during the first wave one to the wave two to test the efficiency of uh, several traditional medicinal systems. Uh, but however, no clinical trials uh, yet to confirm the efficacy of these uh, herbal extracts. So 
do whatever i have mentioned during this uh, agreement the coronavirus uh, basic aspects that are very important to, for, the, for the topic uh, they just uh, having to have a recall of what your things is so prevention of attachment to the host cell is one important step and prevention of uh, fusion the between the for example as2 receptor and the virus particle that is a second important step and uh, removal of virus by immune cells that is the one the third important step these are the entry level blockers once it enters into the system i mean a cell so preventing its multiplication by using the various synthetic drugs uh, what they are recommended by the respect to uh, governmental agencies uh, till today that what happens and once it enters from the uh, the cell and uh, it uh, exaggeration stage if it reaches that is called cytokine storm we will say so a lot of uh, new uh, like uh, cytokine blockers or anti inflammatory substances or chemicals uh, will be medicines or uh, recommended but they do have a lot of uh, side effects uh, and most recently the roche and uh, other companies uh, have uh, recommended uh, the antibody cocktails uh, which are highly effective but at the same time minimum 2 to 3 doses we need to take each dose cost around 65 plus uh, thousand rupees uh, that's uh, it is a very effective actually antibody cocktail so now we'll come to the secondary metabolism that is the main topic uh, where we are seeing how these are the secondary metabolism the, the difference between the primary metabolism and secondary metabolism is uh, primary metabolism means generally the ones associated with the basic growth of the plant like uh, carbon hydrogen nitrogen based substances and uh, other biosynthetic pathways uh, related to the photosynthesis uh, glycolysis and all these from these uh, basic primary metabolism uh, 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 products uh, these um, various other biosynthetic pathways uh, gets uh, triggered and produce uh, metabolites uh, they are called secondary metabolites why do the plants produce these secondary metabolites it's from plant perspective it helps them to uh, uh, for the defense purpose that helpful to uh, face uh, to survive with the predators pests parasites pathogenic all these things so that is the main purpose for the plant but when it comes to this uh, others uh, like uh, because of their uh, uh, what is called protective role or antioxidant nature most of these secondary metabolites uh, are have useful to the rest of the creature like uh, human beings in fact it is not to plant alone produce uh, these uh, primary metabolite secondary metabolite even a very good number of fungi microbes actinomyces all these also also produce this one since we are focusing on plants i would like to mention here only so these secondary metabolites from human point of view are helpful for pharmacy that may medicinal purposes flavor molecules agrochemicals colors fragrances and other things so many of the hormones that trigger these secondary metabolites of production in plants like the various structurally varied compounds like what i mentioned coumarin flavonoids polyphenol isoflavones like this so this is the basic uh, information about the secondary metabolites from biosynthetic point of view if you look at these plant secondary metabolites as i mentioned from the, the primary metabolic and the products like glycar sub, sub cycle parts uh, these secondary metabolites gets origin and various biosynthetic pathways like a uh, phenyl propionyl pathway and uh, shikimate pathway terpenoid pathway all these things will uh, get triggered and these uh, metabolites will be produced especially the most important things are shikimate pathway and phenyl propionyl pathway the end products of this phenyl propionyl pathway like uh, anthocyanins flavonoid molecule polyphenol compound lignans styrene stannins like this similarly terpenoids another important one monoterpene diterpene cisterpene etc steroids and uh, another important class is uh, alkaloids that we are going to talk now so this is the glimpse of uh, this what i have mentioned so with from glycolysis end product pgp and here again phosphine alpentate pathway erythrocyte from this these two pathways gets pyruvate and shikimate gets act um, activated and aromatic amino acids aliphatic amino acids like this many biosynthetic secondary metabolic compounds will be produced so another important uh, i mean uh, thing is easily how to differentiate these secondary metabolites nitrogen containing one non nitrogen containing nitrogen containing ones means uh, the alkaloids polypeptides lactins glucosinolates cyanogenic glycosides 
like a cyanogenic glycolomics is and uh, drumstick plant they are present and very high uh, potent uh, antioxidant compounds and the not nitrogenic one is some of the fatty acid molecules uh, having by chains and tannins flavonoids organic one tritepins monotepins lignins cyclosetpins all these things comes under non nitrogenic form so what uh, how do you get generally with either in the crude form we will use the plant extract like in indian traditional medicine like ayurveda unani siddha medicines but otherwise uh, if you are able to identify isolate characterize uh, certain molecules uh, then it is equally important uh, to optimize uh, a method for its uh, extraction and to maximum extent uh, purify these uh, compounds so many of these terpenoids or plates Leonides, glycosides, phenolics, and all these things have very well uh, uh, optimized uh, for up to ninety percent to ninety five percent of purification level, and they are in use in various industries. From the health point of view, now uh, now onwards we'll from the health point of view we'll see. So since our topic is against the corona pan pandemic virus, uh, so the antiviral efficacy is only we will look into this in this uh, topic. So the many of the flavonoids. Naphthodianthrons, anthraquinones have been assisted uh, during the last decade, especially in this last five years, uh, and they are proven to be the one of the best uh, uh, for their antiviral potential. Especially flavonoids such as uh, chamferol, isomelpyrinitin, and synergically inhibit the SARS-CoV-2 mPro. This is a protein, and also uh, papain like protease uh, that I mentioned just now. So these are the and since these two are the, at very entry level important, uh, especially the camphorol and uh, this isoleucotangent combination seems to be the very good uh, for treating this uh, uh, for preventing this uh, coronavirus entry, SARS CoV two entry. Similarly, the immunomodulated effect of tinospora, cardiolaria, uh, cardiophoria, anthemisia, nigella sativa, like that, various things were have been advocated, especially since they are uh, believed to downregulate the. These uh, TRP genes that may be involved in the survival of uh, coronavirus in the once it enters to the epithelial cells, uh, especially the tinospora part for you might have seen in the news channels and uh, social media, people started to bring these leaves and chew daily. You can chew with one plant, one leaf, uh, so that uh, the coronavirus will not uh, 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 enter into our body to the nostrils and other things, or you will get basic uh, immunity protection. to some extent it may be true but scientifically there is no clear cut evidence for this one since the tinospora is a reservoir of a wide range of bacterial compounds again it's a dose dependent response also will be there otherwise side effects also will be there so so the purification and the characterization is one of the important thing and another one is a psychosaponin p2 from a uh, group uh, species uh, this is reported by another beneficial one against the infection caused in coronavirus one 229 strain e so there are based on the different variants for to especially this 229 e variant uh, against that one this seems to be the very very effective and uh, similarly from ginger that what we use in the daily poison the six gingerol showed a high binding efficacy against these coronavirus so targets especially rna binding protein proteases and spike proteins of course initially this was tried against the sars co but the sars co 2 also trials have been done and they are encouraging the, on this aspect similarly the molecules like xerobone and other things from ginger cftri scientists how characterized them and the trials are going on they potential against this coronavirus There are so, as I mentioned, various uh, antiviral phyto medicines uh, have been uh, tried initially because you might have heard in the 2002 uh, actually the SARS CoV-2 got uh, uh, attacked attacked the human populations that uh, sporadically some parts of the world, especially the China and some East Asian countries. Similarly, in the Middle East, uh, the MERS CoV-2 that got origin in 2012. that is the middle east respiratory syn uh, syndrome uh, that also became a very uh, highly infective one but the death rate was uh, low so at the time they actually using the herbal extracts for against to avoid this viral infections was started like uh, lycoris artemisia lingria isetis and uh, phytoma like the various plants 
If you look at this uh, RTMC annual, you might have heard in the news channels that uh, the Thailand government, many of these things were based on RTMC annual. They tried and anthurium uh, andrography species were also tried. And uh, they, um, uh, a lot of research, government officially has recommended, especially this andrography, so paniculata based uh, extracts. So it varies with the country to country level of research and uh, metabolite, uh, metabolites concentration, et cetera. So at this point, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, we have to appreciate this Chinese traditional medicine because it is very, very well uh, researched with us and a lot of uh, scientific uh, evidences uh, have been established uh, in support of their traditional applications for the various uh, health purposes, unlike uh, the Indian one. In India, generally, we rely mostly on cocktails and the crude extracts. Um, nowadays, a lot of emphasis, of course, has been given. Here, in the entire, during when, the, when the corona uh, infestation started in, in, the, in 2019, December, itself, uh, the Chinese government uh, officially identified certain herbs uh, and uh, asked them to apply in the entire 23 provinces. Uh, and uh, they attributed this, uh, this such a type of uh, Herbal basic treatments uh, are the reasons for the low death rate uh, in China. Some of these plants I did not not necessary to make here, especially this astragalus is reported to be one uh, stands um, the fourth among the top five immuno boosters. Similarly, licorice, japonica, glyceresia, fructus like this rhizoma astragalus, uh, all these things were very well used in a crude form. If you look at this uh, glance at these uh, phytochemicals identified and extracted from uh, Chinese medicinal herbs and their mode of action against COVID-19, these are all the left side one, the, the phenolic compounds, uh, phenolic compound plant extracts, uh, um, like similarly, as I mentioned, the glycides and other things, uh, flavonoids uh, such as uh, rifolin, uh, pectolin, and yet character and ancient calate, all these things from these plants are shown to be very effective. And their mode of action, if you look at this, that entry level itself, uh, they are effective by preventing this attack uh, from um, uh, the, uh, what is called the joining of the fusion of between the SARS virus and the 3LC proenzyme. And this one. Similarly, the inhibition of viral RDRP is another important uh, thing. Similarly, the CL pro, most of them. Similarly, yes, that is an angiotensin converting and then receptors at level also. The um, uh, binding can it is uh, effective in preventing that one. Similarly, the bioactive compounds to justify these proteases of a coronavirus structural proteins and the polymerase essential for its application. As I mentioned just now earlier, the S1, S2 part of the spike protein binding to this um, ACE receptors um, and uh, fusion and uh, subsequent penetration to the cells is uh, the stage where these alkaloids are reported to be having a very good response, especially the berberine. A good number of plants produces a berberine. In fact, the Tinospora all do contain a very high quantity of berberine with the bare fruits and other plants. Similarly, the amitin and uh, sanguarin. The, because these com three metabolites are also known for their nature as a DNA intercalators, probably they in the, because of this particular function, they may be effective. Uh, similarly, many Equinoline, like isoquinoline and alkyls, like uh, quinine, shikmanarin, dictamine, beta carbolins are also reported to be very effective at this entry level. Especially the beta carbolin, even in coffee, also do contain the beta carbolin to a greater extent. Similarly, the, this artemisian based chloroquine that we have discussed, why the synthetic drugs were initially used is mainly because of the past research from against this. Uh, uh, chloroquine and other things uh, against some time uh, at the uh, initial uh, entry level of the virus multiplication. Once the virus particle takes control of the cell and rapid multiplication happens at the time, probably these drugs may not be useful. Only at the entry level it will be useful. Similar, the cochicine is one of the potent uh, mutagenic uh, compound uh, that we know the, from the cochicine atom. That generally, we use in the uh, genetics uh, people use to create the mutations, but the same also cause the mutation and uh, reduce the uh, what is called um, infestation rate uh, or proliferation rate of the virus particle. But of course, there are no human voluntary studies on this one. If my, you might have seen in the news channel just a couple of weeks ago, not even was 10 days back in Hindu, also it has come. The ashwagandha, 
this UK government has officially started to do the human voluntary studies on Ashwanda. Of course, in, in traditional medicinal practices in India, China, and other oriental countries, we know this plant is commonly used to get rid really of stress and it acts like a general body tonic health and it improves the mood and the stamina, endurance for a wide range of medicinal attributes were given. In UK also, since it is available, in every part, uh, especially from India and China supplies, uh, and uh, people started to use this one, and a lot of many claims uh, were there in the UK that it has really helped the population to get rid of this uh, COVID-19 associated uh, post-infestation symptoms. That's why now human voluntary studies have been started just 10 days back. Because this is the richest source of various alkaloid forms like phenolites, all these together come. But structurally, they are slightly different. So a lot of work is there. Thanks to the Indian and Chinese traditional medicinal applications wherein it is very commonly used. So next is the most important after alkaloids are the Terpenoids, these are basically from uh, IPP, this isopentanyl uh, diphosphate pathway they get its origin. And uh, these are because the pharmacological properties mainly are uh, attributed, I mean, provide uh, the protection to the plant against the insect predator, heavy worms, and microbial pathogens. So these antimicrobial properties, anti pest properties are mainly attributed to structural IPP rings, retinal rings, and uh, they, uh, similarly, it inhibits the protease activity of uh, viruses uh, by interfering with the amino acids. Uh, so that's why you better have this alpha variant, delta variant, lambda variant, like this, like this we are having. So that because of the mutations, so what happened to this chimeric COVID virus, uh, the, the, a particular change in a specific amino acid uh, in a position uh, it gives it uh, a different variant and its virulence uh, also will levels will change. So in particular, um, um, property, scientists try to tap the, and uh, use these retinoids uh, to address this issue. One such a thing is the uh, eucalyptus oil. It is known as an uh, eucalyptol. It contains the so 1,8 senior It has been proved to be against uh, this EMPRO proteins uh, inhibition prevention during in, in silver studies. But of course, in human voluntary studies, it studies had to be taken. Similarly, betulinic acid and uh, various other terpenoids like uh, Thymoquine, salvinone, ginkgo, poscoline, beta cyanical, noscapins, many other such things are uh, uh, reported to be having this particular property, antiviral property. You might have again in the social media where during the last uh, six months, I think uh, various uh, Ayurvedic practitioners uh, are recommending the use of uh, the black fumin that is called nizal sativa. So you can soak this it is a daily if you take uh, one 30 uh, grams of uh, this uh, black uh, fumin soak once. Uh, it, it acts like a very good um, protection, provides, provides very good protection at this uh, viral multiplication in the human body. And uh, you will uh, get uh, protected from this virus entry also. This is mainly because attributed to the thymoquine, um, the tepin, because the molecular docking studies prove to be very, very encouraging for this one. Whatever antiviral drugs, remdesivir, and other things they are using, this particular molecule is very close to it's um, almost 95, 99%. So they say this one, and it really clicked, and a lakhs of people used this one and got uh, benefited. You can check that in the website. Similarly, for scoline, that is another important one, has been given very good contribution. Uh, the most important carbs other than after the alkalides and terpenoids are the polyphenolic compounds that comprise phenolic acids, tile beans, lignins, and all these things. So the flavonoid molecules, especially, is considered considered as one of the important the polyphenols because uh, various reports since long may five six decades uh, they reported you know, they are known for their anti-inflammatory responses, anti-cancer potential, antioxidant uh, properties. Uh, like uh, all pigments per se, carotenoids, anthocyanins, beta lines, all such properties, uh, all these natural pigments do act like the anti inflammatory and anti cancer properties. But from viral perspective, among these, if you look at this, uh, polyphenolic and flavonoid compounds like uh, apigenin, luteolin, quercetin, chemferol, diazine, 
the epi galactocatechin chain like this so many things uh, are known to be very effective it will inhibit the proteases like a 3cl pro of uh, sars cov 2 among these the top best guys they are there epigenin epi galactocatechin chalate and epi galactocatechin the top three next is uh, kemperol and uh, quercetin similar to the the curcumin of course, you might have heard again about in the, in the, in the, in the very uh, social media how protective this uh, curcumin. But against antiviral, the scientific evidences are uh, limited against the CO2. Maybe it contributes, it alleviates the rest of the uh, in, uh, uh, human body from the rest of the symptoms are associated symptoms. Uh, but to be uh, exactly its mechanism against the sars cov growth multiplication inhibition is a to come. But it has given very good uh, uh, moderate uh, moderate to good response during the COVID uh, wave. Similar the camphoral and the sterostylvines are reported to be very good against this one. So inhibition of especially this S2 domain that I have mentioned some time back uh, that is a, this is a part two of the spike two pro spike protein of the virus particle to inhibit the spike spike S2. That means uh, even those virus uh, spike particle go and binds to the attack to the yes receptors of the sodium cells. Uh, Unless this S2 domain is active, the fusion won't take place uh, and it, the virus particle unable to enter. So if you use this chemical biometabolites, uh, probably the fusion will not take place and virus particle could not progress further to penetrate into the thing. So that is the beauty of uh, these particular chemicals here. And the inhibition of binding to the ACE receptors, especially, was again uh, reported by some, some other groups, especially they reported this caffeic acid, flavonoid, crysine, phenylester, luteolin, all these things were proposed. But as I mentioned uh, just a uh, complete uh, in vitro and human voluntary studies are uh, to take place of uh, these uh, you know, all metabolites. So the resveratrol LMA, one of the, the important back to compound, you know, flavonide compound present in the red wine and many other things are also reported to have very effective against the MESCO2. That satisfies, so this, since we get as a neuroprocytical in uh, many, many social uh, market, online markets, uh, people start to use this one. So some people express benefit, some people express no benefit of uh, this one. Be because uh, since resolutol, because easily thing, easy thing to get is uh, like wine, but how everybody will not to drink the red wine. So people go for the alternate things, uh, alternate sources uh, like, um, for example, if you drink 100 ml of red wine, you will get 1 milligram of resveratrol, that to be fermented one. If you take our groundnuts, uh, the groundnut brown skin is there on the seed for that one. Generally, we'll fry and remove that one. But some people, as when you eat in the press time, as such, it will be very useful. Do you know how much it will be? 8 milligrams of resveratrol will be there in this uh, groundnut uh, brown layer, that one. So never don't throw that one, eat that one also. So avoid in an anthroquinone of polyphenol found in the roots of rhubarb and uh, other things like curcuma, as I mentioned, citrus species contains uh, tangerine, nangerine, hispiridine. These are also reported having a very effective against this S protein of this uh, virus particle. Especially the naringin has been, uh, already recommended by the FDA for the therapy in the USA. This is of course its origin from the citrus species. The most important, as I mentioned, just about the chemical TCG, that is a one two three six tetra or gallyl beta deglucase, and lutein were found to be bind with the sars cov to surface proteins. Uh, so you can arrest the growth at this one. So these two molecules have been permitted by the FDA. So why do these things are recommended? Basically. Just I would like to mention that it is an antioxidant activity. So they are having a potential uh, in uh, scavenging the hydroxyl radical activity on, on the oxide radical activity like this. So why do they do that one? That is uh, another question. The main reason is their glycosidic linkages. So based on this glycosidic linkages and the molecule, uh, the glycosidic bond, a compound that carbohydrate, they occur rarely are less common ones are occur frequently when among the frequently ones glucose molecule galactose ramose glylose which bind to this enzyme so molecule linkage is established to these bioactive molecules and they become very active very rarely arabinose and mannose are glucuronic acid so if we just look at this table 
this comparison of antioxidant activity of all, the water soluble flavonoids may be sourced from the leaves, present vegetables, or fruits. And if you compare with the vitamin C, equally compared to the vitamin C, especially this uh, epigalactocatin and galactic C, more, two, two times more. Similarly, epicatechins that is present in the tea and other uh, sources uh, are equally better than, more better than the, uh, like this vitamin C. Of course, myricetin present in many fruits, lutein, quercetin, and all these things. Many floral extracts do like hibiscus floral extract, uh, are, uh, anthocyan uh, rich flowers or do contain this uh, quercetin. So what is the daily intake? Uh, According to a study in the Scotland, uh, vitamin E and vitamin C in the North Scotland, for example, especially the flavonols, flavones, if it is the medium range, minimum range, and maximum range. So this is the um, daily intake uh, through uh, food chain. Maybe it depends again, varies the country to country, type of food, what we eat, and other things. So it's an average values on the it has been given here. So the catechins and the flavonones uh, predominate uh, in the daily intake of these uh, flavonoids in various uh, forms uh, compared to the vitamin C again here. So these two contribute to more to the antioxidant activity and benefit to the health. So one way we are telling these are helpful to our uh, health, especially to prevent the viral load, especially coronavirus. So if so, how much quantity we need to uh, ingest uh, these polyphenolic forms either in the uh, food extract form or in their pure form. So 75 to 99 percent of ingested polyphenols are uh, not detected in urine. So per se any bioactive compound. So if it is uh, come, uh, and uh, directly come into this one, it is understood that is the absorption in the advert and whatever is absorbed, absorbed remaining it will come to the urine. No, it's not gut barrier absorber. It has been taken. Most of this gets metabolized in the liver, wherein it may pass through the first pass mechanism or second pass by mechanisms uh, and uh, further transfer to the large intestine portion. At that portion, in that portion, uh, intestinal portion, pollen, macroflora, gut bacteria use these compounds uh, and uh, further biosynthetic metabolism uh, through pathways gets uh, operated and give benefit to us. So the, uh, the pharmacological dose based on the annual studies and the human voluntary studies uh, is very important uh, to define the dose. So ingestion of nutritionally relevant accounts is very important in this case. So what happens to these uh, bioactive compounds uh, if anybody takes uh, inside uh, and uh, how these gut microflora interfere with uh, the action, the response and other metabolites production and that particular interaction of the gut microflora depends upon various reactions, especially in small intestine and liver. This uh, cytosolic beta glucose is uh, gets activated and uh, they're responsible. Similarly, if it is in a small intestine, this uh, fluorescein hydrogen lactase uh, based ones are active and a UDP glucuronide transfer is active in intestine and liver and uh, catechin based methyl transfer is active in uh, the liver. So that is the mechanism, bioavailability, what are the top predominant uh, bioactive compounds, so bioactive metabolites helpful to this one. At this point, it is also equally important to uh, whatever the leads uh, the scientists or researchers have established uh, in the recent uh, time. It is mainly because since we have um, uh, we had just completed one and a half year to two years time only after the um, outbreak of this uh, pandemic, uh, this uh, now only actually the plant based uh, uh, drugs identification and uh, discovery has happening. So what our leads are mostly based on the computational and uh, biomedicals uh, and molecular virology based uh, studies only. So they, they, it is very important to know few important steps in this regard also. The computational based identification of flavonoids, just for example, I have taken a case study here. When, whenever you are using the bioinformatics, you students have already probably might have studied during your graduation or uh, postgraduate, especially the students from the Eurajas College, where you have, so this is part of in our curriculum. This, uh, the, the most first and important step is the host response signature network identification is one of the important steps. Uh, 
what is this host and um, uh, signature response network means. Uh, for example, if you go for the analysis of any network, uh, it discloses an important subnetwork of highly interconnected 31 proteins. For example, whenever a virus particle or microbial pathogens are attacks to the human body, the immunity mechanism gets a trigger to um, get rid of this uh, particle by outside uh, extraneous particles. So our uh, immunity system, the various uh, inflammatory markers uh, gets uh, triggered in this during this um, uh, cascade of events like interleukins, TNF alpha markers, uh, toxin resistant molecules uh, like this. So among this, so altogether 31 R proteins are identified involved in this uh, system. So predominant, especially against the flavonoids, whatever may be the flavonoid. So that leads with once uh, either IL-6 or TNF or FOX or any all together. If all of a sudden a huge over response or over reaction happens, what happens? A bursting will be there. Even when we get angry with somebody, instantly we will burst. So similarly, it's called cytokine storm here in the cell. And under the regulation, this actually happens because of whenever this exchange particles dominance is there and interactions happens. But uh, all these uh, inflammatory market responses will be again under the control of uh, five factors. They call transcription factors, uh, STAT1, STAT3, and uh, POW, and uh, NFKB1. Especially with reference to the flavonoids, uh, it has been identified that in many flavonoids cases, uh, this NFKB1 transcription factor gets triggered and that leads to these inflammatory markers uh, response. So the subnetwork of all the 31 proteins uh, is caused uh, under the five master regulators is called host response signature network in case of flavonides. So just uh, I, we, uh, it's not necessary to go in depth into this one. This is the called the simple the KEC pathway enrichment uh, for uh, how does this host response signature network uh, happens here. So whenever this entry of this uh, um, markers, I mean virus particle happens through these is uh, transcriptional factors. Uh, many of these um, sub networks like uh, markers will get say, activated, and that leads to the storming of cytokine called cytokine storm. So second important step is the predicting the molecular structure here predicting the molecular structure. So the drug-like uh, uh, likeness, that means, for example, you are taking a spike protein. You are taking remdesivir or some epigenin or something, whether they are synthetic or natural molecules. So how the protein-protein binding, that means, uh, uh, receptor binding domains uh, of uh, these proteins uh, gets uh, go for fusion that means the light information all these things happen so to know that one the likeliness of the molecule is uh, very important for example from andrograph is a paniculata here one andrograph molecule is the left side one which is a two dimensional structure they have given so different functional groups like uh, oxygen and hydroxyl groups are shown in the red color. So this is a three-dimensional structure. So again, as you know that uh, they will be giving you different values and the potency that will be again depends upon the desired value what you get for the molecular weight when hydrogen donors, how many are there, how many acceptors are there, rotatable bonds, how many are there, and they, whether they are uh, you know, lipophilicity, nature, log values are there. So these are all very important. For andrography, so it has been very well reduced. The second important, third important step is the covalent docking. This is a docking study, so what we people call docking, docking. Even if you see that, as I mentioned uh, uh, in the earlier slide, and also I'm projecting one slide uh, very soon, wherein various bio compounds, bio two compounds, plant based ones, so the docking values have been given. They are very near to this uh, synthetic antiviral drugs like Remdesivir, Fabinavir, Lopinavir. So the tools what they use are for these are very well done, uh, optimized, especially the dot work, uh, auto duct Vina is very good for this uh, ligand. For example, here in this structure, the docking studies, if you see here, um, this andrographic molecule. So, which particular amino acid position is very important to go and bind in this particular position is uh, can be deduced, uh, and uh, that is very important uh, to decipher this one. So, for example, here the C16 uh, two, uh, and uh, this is SC atom, whatever you can see here. This is the binding area where in this molecule go and bind this one. So, based on this one, again three-dimensional structures and other things, uh, they you can easily uh, identify here in this picture molecular docking of androglyphrate in TNF polymer homodimer. So, here the first part is the pose of uh, androglyphrate within the binding site of 
TNF or homodimer, it has been NFK1 is the uh, area that responsible for uh, clean this one. So these are the various uh, back to molecules, as I have mentioned. Again, precedent origin. So, which uh, site of action, as I mentioned, three CL pro and other things have been given, and the IC15 molecules have been given. And uh, this is one recent report. Many countries, like in African countries, India, many countries, uh, whatever traditionally known plants uh, were uh, assisted for these docking studies. Hundreds of reports are there. For example, many of these plants, uh, especially the phenolic compounds and uh, steroid based drugs and the furan based drugs, are the predominant one like this in brazil they have reported uh, many of these molecules uh, and they are using uh, these uh, directly these uh, particular uh, flavonoid and uh, phenolic rich compounds uh, extracts for this uh, covid treatment so this is a simple uh, clear picture of uh, how this spike protein uh, establishes uh, rbd with the yes receptors this is also actually i have explained in the beginning itself and uh, so to sum up uh, this back to molecules, uh, the left column, that's one, uh, these are the antivirals uh, suggested against the S2 receptors. And these are the essential oils from the plants like eucalyptus oil and other things are also very good in this case. And uh, like the terpene oils, so allyl dial sulfide, allyl compounds, so geraniol, all these are reported to be very effective. Similarly, some flavonoid inhibitors are what we have discussed. So these 10 from each group are the promising ones. The one what we have missed is the fatty acids. Generally, people ignore the importance of these fatty acids. But the recent reports have demonstrated the efficacy of this uh, uh, mentioned the, uh, uh, fatty acid molecules uh, in the treatment of COVID, people have recommended this uh, coconut oil because the coconut oil contains 47 to 50 percent of the lauric acid. That's why in the Ayurvedic formulation, the pure coconut oil, they recommended to put it in the nostrils uh, so that viral entry itself between a virus particle bounds to this one, it gets uh, inactivated. So that is the reason. So similarly, the, based on the docking studies, uh, many reports have indicates uh, the efficiency of uh, all these things uh, and their docking values uh, are also have been uh, given. So again, here, the particular um, uh, amino acids, uh, the, uh, which part of amino acid gets uh, bind in this uh, RBD, that is a very important. For example, here, this one, uh, this uh, yeah, um, arginine 408, this is the particular amino. In case of arginine 408 and also um, glycine 414 in case of capric acid. So like this, uh, various uh, reports uh, are available and fatty acids role is also has been optimized. So as we mentioned earlier, first one is uh, clear cut evidences are available against the SARS-CoV-2. Sometimes alternative to are repurposed. That means even though the, uh, the, the herbal extract is not intended for this, it might be intended for some other because of their inflammatory action, they reoriented this to the COVID virus that is called the repurposing of uh, medicines or herbal extract is happened. And all these uh, are target about uh, PL pro, 3L pro proteins and RDRP, spike proteins, etc. So even in the uh, Aish department in India has also done a lot of work. And uh, in fact, that through ICMR, they have given a lot of prophylactic measures are also given. But all these mechanism is at the entry level or at the multiplication level. But once it enters to the system and uh, takes control of the human cells, uh, there, I mean, uh, these drugs may not be effective. That is what uh, still a lot of work has to be done in this case so from plants to we are directly using now efforts are also on with by using the metabolic engineering aspects so either in inside the plant itself to produce a more quantity of these bio back to metabolites or identifying the genes and putting into the microbes uh, to um, uh, to make them uh, microbial factories to produce these metabolites. In basic biotechnology, we might have studied all these things, but such things had to take place uh, in this case of uh, COVID. So this is the picture how uh, metabolic engineering uh, we can do from plant cell to the bacteria and multiply and extract the drug that just I don't want to go. So. During the last one and a half year, we are themed to pandemic to therapeutic uh, aspects. Uh, in place of uh, these uh, synthetic and allopathic uh, medicines, uh, people are now 
depending are uh, trying to depend on this uh, back to metabolize since we have very good uh, research out uh, leads in this case so there is a big race uh, to for the from the researchers point of view to identify the medicine for this uh, already it is a 2 billion dollars market is there exclusively for the vaccine so you imagine about the uh, if anybody is able to develop the drug in this one so in place of uh, these uh, allopathic and uh, synthetic things uh, these natural molecules whatever we have discussed right now are probably a good candidate so maybe you can consider these are the magic bullets of the nature so you can use these natural molecules um, either at the prophylaxis um, efforts uh, that means to prevent the infestation or spread or the traditionally known metabolites uh, from the plants uh, uh, directly in to, uh, uh, to help in the drug discovery point of view or these molecules just like uh, immuno booster so uh, you can use but you will need to consult uh, a practitioner medical practitioners uh, and ayurvedic experts uh, in case if you want to use these metabolites plant based metabolites especially in the pure form so even though they are immuno boosters in the crude form but in the purified form several studies are required if you randomly use these things uh, instead of immunity boosting they may blast your immunity also so since the last one two weeks we are seeing that so r factor this is very very important now as per the latest to think uh, the eight uh, states in india have already crossed with a uh, r value of 1.2 and nine more states in india are just touched the one what is the r factor it is nothing but the reproductive factor of the vine particle that means every one person if an infected person um, is there you may infect a point seven in case of uh, area so even and uh, that is by intensity of the virus spread is low now one means one person equally infects one or 1.2 means one person infects 1.2 so like that that means it indicates the rapid progress of this uh, virus particle covid uh, again after second now may lead to the sound so what we need to is e- require is uh, stay at home self quarantine self isolation stay safe stage in stay isolation stay the social distancing these are all what we are trying to of course we are following but uh, no is to be seen in this one no relaxation in this one people should switch up so strict follow all these things uh, will be helpful so this is the picture thanks to all because all the covid warriors uh, have done tremendous job in protecting us uh, so this is the picture what a school boy what he has uh, cartoon that available in the net i thought it is more appropriate uh, to use during this last slide thank you very much dr rajesh Thank you sir I request our principal madam to address the gathering
Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, your microphone has been muted. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am, you're audible now, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Giridhar Parvatam, Senior Principal Scientist, Department of Plant uh, Cell Biotechnology, CFTRI Mysore. Uh, Professor Devraj Guda, Administrative Officer of our college. Professor Umesh, Controller of our uh, uh, examination. Professor uh, Vidya, Coordinator of IQAC. Professor Rajesh, Convener of uh, this uh, webinar. Faculty members, research scholars, and dear students. I'm very happy to uh, uh, share with we had uh, Giridhar with us who accepted and delivered the uh, thought provoking uh, uh, views on uh, the topic of uh, uh, trends, uh, sorry, uh, trends in application of plant metabolites during COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I hope this webinar uh, may be uh, utilized by our uh, students and faculty members. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I congratulate uh, Professor Rajesh for organizing this uh, webinar, which is very relevant and important uh, for this uh, uh, pandemic situation. Uh, and uh, I, I thank all the viewers and listeners of this webinar. Thank you one and all, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I request Bhargavi Kashyap to convey the vote of thanks. Namaste to all. Happy afternoon. I'm Bhargavi Kashyap from Yuvraja's College. Firstly, I would like to thank Honorable Chief Speaker, Dr. Giridhar Parvatamso, who take out time from their busy schedule to grace this webinar. It's very much interesting and informative lecture, and thank you very much sir, for this vital topic at this pandemic period. It's really informative speech which led to enrich our knowledge. We are very grateful for you, sir. Thank you once again. And also, I would like to express thanks to our Yuvraja's College Principal, Professor B.N. Yashoda, ma'am, for her presence and support for this session. And also, I would like to thank our HOD of Biotech Department, Dr. Rajesh Jaisar, for his moral support and guidance. And also, I'm very much happy to express a vote of thanks for all our beloved staff members. And thanks to coordinator of IQAC, Dr. Vidya Or, ma'am. And also thanks to controller of examination, KB Umeso. And also my humble thanks to the University of Mysuru and Yuvraja's College to provide this wonderful opportunity for all biotech students. Lastly, I deeply appreciate every participant who made this webinar fruitful. Thank you one and all. And also I thank my friend and comparer Apurva J. Thank you Apurva. And lastly, all of you guys, take care of you and your family in this pandemic. Happy day for all. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Yavarajas College for giving me an opportunity and for inviting me to deliver this talk. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rajesh, you have to unmute. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your uh, nice lecture, sir. So really, it was uh, 
highly impressive and uh, quite interesting. Uh, we extend our thanks from our uh, colleagues and also personalism. Thank you so much. Yes, are there so any sure. questions from the participants? Are there any questions? I think one question I have seen here. Is yeah. it true that uh, curcumin inhibits RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and it also binds to ACE receptor? Yes, ACE receptor, uh, that means ACE2 receptor wise, yes, yes, many reports are there. Uh, uh, I think it is beneficial from that point of view, but uh, the docking scores for, to confer its uh, protection in the form of uh, RNA-dependent uh, RNA polymerase binding wise, uh, the scores values are uh, less compared to other bioactive molecules. So probably that uh, ACE2 receptor at the entry level will do good. Uh, are there any products from your lab that means CFTRA being commercialized? No, we have in, uh, in fact started the work on this uh, biomolecules against the COVID prevention uh, just eight day, uh, one year back. It's not even one year. So at least I think four or five groups are working in the CFTRA and we have narrowed down to some six different uh, back to molecules from different sources. Uh, still the work is going on, especially the molecules what we had are very good in preventing the cytokine storm with reference to the IL-6 because the IL-6 is the predominant one you know, for the, responsible for this uh, cytokine storm. So hopefully in future these leads uh, will, will uh, help us uh, to make a fortified food formulations in this regard. Almost uh, we are uh, 70 to 80 percent studies are over. So at least six more out of six molecules, uh, five are very good in this one. One molecule I already mentioned earlier in the, from the uh, zinger and rest of the molecules are from other plants. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any more questions from the participant side? Uh, can you please uh, suggest use of uh, some common herbs in household? Yeah. Yes, uh, household, I mentioned uh, the flaxseed. I forgot to mention, thanks for your question. Because in fact, I want to say this one flaxseed. One thing yeah. I already told you is the black cumin nizala. Mm -hmm. This gives a wonderful wonder. If whatever remedies we do the benefit, uh, the flaxseed uh, gives the same benefit, especially in this RDRP uh, uh, prevention and the activation inhibition is very good for the flaxseed. The, there are chemical, uh, synthetic chemistry, chemical engineers uh, recommended that one. If you check the YouTube, uh, I think his name is uh, Dr. Malik. Dr. Malik, chemical, bio, chemical synthetic chemical chemistry, chemistry from the Vaidag, I think. Sir, he, are... They are recommended this uh, 30 grams of this uh, flaxseed uh, per day. If you take, uh, you will be 99% protected from this uh, viral attack. That is what they claimed, and lots of people are using this black nizella, this and also this uh, flaxseed. Sir, there are two main uh, bioactive molecules in flaxseed, eh? so we are working on that one uh, in our laboratory. So as you right. said, one is uh, okay. fatty acid, especially omega-3 fatty acid, that is uh, alpha-linolenic exactly. acid, eh? and another yes. one is lignan. So, do you have yes. uh, any reference for that one? Uh, so, I think in my uh, in the initially. For that uh, what is called uh, re um, the receptors level, I mean binding to the ACE receptors mm -hmm. and also the combination between uh, the subgroup of spike protein to the ACE receptor. There, this lignans also I have mentioned, one reference yeah. I have given right? yeah, in yeah. one of my slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is there. It's yeah. very good. That's why flaxseed is uh, doing really wonders. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions from the audience? 
yes we can yeah. give flax seed because uh, kids means i i mean I, not like below 6 years or like that <laughs> maybe grown up kids that's why the millet uh, millet ladoos and other things uh, even cfr really develop for nutrition point of view so the similarly i think you can use a flax seed it's not a problem yeah but uh, through meal through meal you have to give it's use use must be is limited sir because it contains yes, some yes, anti nutritional factors also yes 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 but kids it should be limited yeah for adult adolescent and uh, age i mean other yeah. high high age yeah yeah up, up to 30 up to 30 30 can grams they are recommended that can be recommended yes yes even per se even per se the methi seeds yeah. their docking docking values are also pretty good Yeah. Uh, and also nearest to this uh, particular flax seeds so that's why they are also they recommended one to two spoons of methi seeds so overnight to soak it once yeah. the next day you can drink as such with water and uh, with chew the seeds so that also gives equal benefit so that is also a reported but for all these things uh, now the icmr they are doing one project i think yeah. to give the substantial scientific evidence but otherwise the people are using and getting benefit any more questions yeah for post covid conditions sir. yes sir it again varies with the nature of infestation the intensity of the infestation whether it is mild or moderate it lasts up to one year but uh, luckily in india the cognitive related issues were very less but in countries like italy and uk the cognitive impairment at cognitive like uh, uh, memory loss and such things were very high uh, after the severe post covid infestations like that but in india most of the things are like uh, weakness uh, lack of appetite and uh, vision problems such as some people are mentioning that is why i mentioned that uh, ashwagandha this is a good stress reliever and a general uh, tonic purpose uh, like that it acts in human body that's why uk government has recommended uh, have human voluntary studies in 2800 people they already started very soon we will get the first result by next month i think they said for 30 to 45 days afterwards second dose of study they will do it so probably such a natural herbal um the general uh, health purpose whatever is recommended probably we can rely on that so any more questions so if you have any more question so you please uh, note down his email id you can count and also his uh, contact number you can contact him over phone and uh, you are very free to visit uh, dr giridhar even in its uh, laboratory at uh, central food technological research institute so at last so lastly so i thank you very much sir so really so we people are uh, especially our students are uh, enriched with your uh, talk and also it was quite interesting and highly impressive sir so thank you sir thank you very much thanks to all